It's the National Football League on EA Sports, where we'll see which conference reigns supreme tonight. This should be a good one to watch on Monday night. On the Gulf Coast of Florida at Raymond James Stadium, just north of downtown Tampa. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis on hand. Kickoff just moments away. Charles, quickly, keys to the game. For me, it's coaching. Who prepared his team the best going into this one to give them the confidence to believe that they would win the game? That's who's going to come out of this one on top. Justin Tucker ready to go here. This is going to be a ton of fun. Ravens and Bucks. Here we go from Tampa. And a decent return out to the 27 yard line. Well, the Bucks getting ready to go on offense for the first time. And it's Baker Mayfield leading him out in his second season as a Buccaneer at his seventh overall. And he had a most impressive bounce back season last year, nearly leading his team to the NFC Championship game. That's not something you see every day, and he was rewarded for it as Tampa Bay decided to make him definitely their quarterback for the future. Now for him, he wants to prove it's not a one-year thing, and in fact, he is the long-term answer for this franchise. Baker going to throw this right away. That's complete to White. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Mayfield now. Quick throw, finding Mike Evans. And he's going to be touched down, but he's got the first down. And if you look up the word consistency in the dictionary, you'll see a picture of Mike Evans pop right up. He's eclipsed the 1,000-yard mark in each of his previous 10 years in the NFL, and he's hoping to make it 11 straight at the conclusion of this season. But the payoff with him, he finds the end zone. Tied for the league lead last year in touchdown receptions with 13. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. They'll bring a receiver in motion right. Mayfield. And there's a short one taken in by Otten. Just a gain of a couple there. And it brings up third and five now. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. I know we spend a lot of time talking about how the defensive backs read routes and, and make plays on the football. How about a good linebacker feeling the route, seeing the quarterback, jumps the play, and knocks it away? Really well done. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. So here's the first drive for the Ravens. And at the helm is the 2023 NFL Most Valuable Player. Second such time he's won the award, Lamar Jackson. And he's coming off a season where he showed everyone that he's worth every single penny he was given. He now has two MVP trophies on his resume and was on the verge of adding a Lamar Hunt trophy to go with it. Unfortunately, things didn't work out in his favor, but make no mistake about it. He's truly one of the most electrifying players in the NFL. As long as he's the man under center, they'll always be in championship conversation. Now it's Jackson. 
The connection here with Nelson Aguilar. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. Now a first carry for Derrick Henry. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. The 22 more yards there and another first down. Well, no slow start here. A couple nice chunk plays back to back. I love the momentum that they're showing here early because they did it both ways, right? Threw the ball on first down for a nice chunk of yardage. Came right back and ran the ball. Looks like they've got the defense set back on their heels. Let's see if they can keep this moving. They keep it with Henry on first down. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. From the 23, here's second down and five. Play action. Now Jackson. Complete to Likely on the out route. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets them up first and goal. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense could get down the field? It's taken them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. So first and goal now from the 7-yard line. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Off the option, here's Henry. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here, not even a thought, yeah, is it? defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. And that's going to be knocked away in the end zone. It's incomplete. Well, how about the challenge we're seeing here in this game early? Man coverage against some fleet receivers. That time, the defense won. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. This from 25 yards out. Tucker's kick is good, and the Ravens strike first at 3 zip. A lot of energy in this building tonight, but the opening drive produces three, maybe quiets them just a bit, at least momentarily. Just a little, right? That's all you're asking for, right? Things just getting started. You know they haven't taken the momentum totally here, but at the same time, they like what they've done here in the early going. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. Well, a dangerous return man showing it here. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out. They had to punt it away, this time hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Mayfield looks to throw. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. Only able to gain a couple there, and it'll be second down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter... Can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. 
that was a good run and it got to the second level and what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play first level being the defensive front last level being the secondary but if the strong safety position end up making the tackle and oftentimes we call them a hybrid combination defensive back combination linebacker we saw the linebacker make the stop and he is caught and he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. First down, here's White. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Ball on the 39. Here's second down and two. They stay on the ground with White. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Two yards, good enough for a first. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. To throw, Mayfield. Quick slant to Otten. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucs have a first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And his throw is incomplete. It certainly looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. Now a second and ten. Now Mayfield. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. The improv act, they're good for nine, and now they'll be looking at a third and short, third and one. This early in the game, it's all about making steady progress downfield, hoping to lead to early points. And you can do it with your actual play calls or sometimes something a little more improvised, as we just saw there. The tight end in motion right. From the gun, Mayfield. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there. And they pick up the first down. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. And his throw here is incomplete. No sense risking anything there on first down. Even though he's still in the pocket, he had a receiver out to his side, so just put that in a spot where the only people who could make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. Second and ten. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, but fortunately he's able to recover his own fumble. That could have been trouble. We hear them discuss red zone efficiency a lot, CD, and they almost gave that one up in the red zone. Luckily, they'll have another shot. And you and I both know that every offensive coordinator, play caller in the league, they take particular delight in their red zone calls because those are the payoff ones. But you can't call a play if your team doesn't have the ball. Got to secure it. Mayfield to throw it. He'll get that out to the flat to White. 
And he will get him down a couple yards shy of the first down marker. A nice tackle coming up from his free safety spot. That'll give him eight that time. And that's going to make it fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? They'll run for it. This is White. And I don't think he got there. He did not. They stop him a yard shy. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. Partner, when you see a running play stop short like that, you just know that the defensive front, they won the battle of leverage and created the push back into the opposing backfield. And for the offensive coordinator, whether you had one yard to go or 20 yards to go on fourth down, now you're probably saying, oh, maybe I should have passed it, right? Yeah, hindsight is always 20-20. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. A solid stiff arm. And they work this out past the 25. 52 yards rushing for him now as he has gotten the night off to a hot start. Well, they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, set, as you've said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. A lot of times, it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Here's second and ten. To throw is Jackson. It's caught by Aguilar. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. They'll come up now third and three. From the gun, Jackson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Ravens first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. Now Jackson. It's hauled in by Hardy. And they'll get this just to the 47. One-yard gain. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. In motion, Aguilar. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. That winds up being a four-yard loss and leads to fourth down. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. And facing fourth down, Baltimore will punt Jordan Stout out there. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Bucs are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory.
Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. They'll start here with a handoff to White. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Here's Mayfield. Across the formation, he finds Godwin. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And now we've got a third down and three. Coming up here, looking for three yards to pick up the first. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. It's a 42-yard punt. They keep him to just a yard on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. They come up with exactly one minute to go in this first quarter. In motion, Aguilar. And they'll get it forward to him on the touch pass. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Now it's Jackson. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 23 yards, the final tally. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. In motion, Aguilar. Jackson now. And this is going to be hauled in by the tight end, Andrews. Two chunk plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards, and so is this one. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Raven football here as we begin quarter number two. As they've got it with a first and ten. In motion, Aguilar. Jackson will throw again. Completes it to Aguilar. So the completion good for seven there. And it's second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball. And they keep making the connection.
Running from the gun with Henry. And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. Have to give credit for a nice play there, but also have to look at it as a blown assignment. He became a free runner that turned into a free hitter. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Off the play fake. Here's Jackson. Throwing out left and finding Likely. And oh, he's just going to be short here. Barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. I thought maybe when he caught he'd have a good chance of getting that first down. But that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. The offense here not budging. They're going to fight for it on fourth and inches. They're going for it with the option right. Oh, and I think he went backward. He did. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And the Buccaneers' defense holds, and they get the football back. And they've now made two trips to the red zone and still looking for their first touchdown. Not able to punch it in, and if you're on defense, your confidence is sky high because mentally you're saying, hey, you're in the red zone. We're thinking we're giving up three. We just want to give up six. In this case, they end up not giving up the touchdown at all. They've got to feel great about what they got done. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 from back at their own 10-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. And that'll make it second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch. But even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss. But that window closed quickly. Palmer going to go in motion left. Mayfield now. This ball complete to Trey Palmer. A gain of eight there on the play. And now one yard to go on third down. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third down, a run from White. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. Mayfield. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that's going to bring up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. From the 42-yard line, here's second and three. Mayfield looks to throw. Five yards on the scramble, and that's enough to pick up the first. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain, so when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. In motion left here, one of their tight ends. Throwing Mayfield. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's White. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. They will run with White out of the shotgun. Pushes him aside at the 45, and he'll get it down here to the 43. 46 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out.
to throw Mayfield. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. That sure looked like a nice call by the defense, and they're very cohesive in their coverage. As soon as he cut inside, they broke on the football and met him as the ball got there and forced the incompletion. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. And motion left goes a tight end. Throwing again on second and 10. Mayfield looking for Godwin, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Roquan Smith. And the Ravens are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. Boy, he had to fit that into a pretty tight window over the middle. And, Charles, I think they were in zone defensively, weren't they? They certainly were. Nice read on your part. And sometimes the quarterback isn't fooled between zone and man. Sometimes just fooled by the type of zone that he sees. Because oftentimes those linebackers will vacate and run downfield with receivers. In this case, he played a pure zone and was in the wrong spot for the QB. Derrick Henry trots back out there and gets ready to go. He's been effective so far over the 40-yard mark here in the second quarter. Don't forget about those guys up front, though. They've been effective, too. The leverage game has been in their favor. They've been the ones who have been able to bend their knees, drop their hips, and get a little bit lower than the guys <laughs> on the other side of the football. And they've moved them out of the way for the runner. Sometimes that's tough for those big fellas. Not an easy thing for them to do. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. And there wasn't much room for the big tight end to do much after the catch. But at least he was able to pick up a solid gain to help his offense continue to move in the right direction. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. And they'll bring the big tight end across the formation left. Here's Jackson. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Kind of a fine line when you're setting up the screen. You don't want to throw it too early and have the defense react too quickly. And you definitely don't want to throw it too late. And that way it's not formed perfectly. Got to make sure you hit it just right. The offense on third down tonight, two for five to this point. This is third and four. Here's Jackson to throw. That is caught. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. A short throw caught by Andrews. And he's going to get this inside the 30. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. Throwing is Jackson. Finds his man over the middle. It's likely. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred the defense. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. They go play action now. Jackson has taken in by his big tight end. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. A 
A first down carry for Henry. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. Now second and nine from the ten. They'll run it again with Henry. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. We knew both of these safeties were good in run support, but how about the play we just saw there? How about that closing speed? Able to get to the outside part of the field and turn that play into a loss. We're backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. Jackson. And he'll go down, brought down at the 20-yard line. Vita Vea breaking through to get the sack. A third and long, you knew that he was going to throw it. He just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield in coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. Tucker's kick is good, and they're able to double their lead in this first half. It's 6 to nothing. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. But not an ideal way to end their previous drive. They threw the interception, Charles, after they had built up some momentum. They were moving the football, but something to at least build on for this offense as they run back out here. Yeah, you're right about that. Up until that last play, everything was working pretty well for this offense, gaining chunks of yardage, getting first downs, really making a push for the end zone and looked like they had a nice rhythm going. Now you got to have a short memory here. Don't focus on the interception. Focus on what came before it and get back to it. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Now Mayfield. That's taken in by Palmer. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 17 yards on the play and a Buccaneer first down. What an intelligent play as he found open grass and uncovered quickly. A nice clutch play to move the chains. The defense, they've got to do a much better job of accounting for these shorter routes. White running to the left. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Second and seven. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Adafi Owe showing off the pass rush skills. But you could almost see his eyes light up defensively. I mean, as a linebacker, that's about as quick as you can get to a quarterback. So what did your third grade teacher teach you about straight lines, right? As soon as you have those, you take full advantage of them. He found a gap in the offensive line, got to the quarterback, and put him on the deck. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. 
Mayfield to throw it. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Evident there that he learned his lesson from the last drive. No way he was going to force a throw that time. When nothing broke open, kept it, and ended up running for a first down himself. On first down, he'll drop to throw to Evans on the slant. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Otten brings it in over the middle. And the Buccaneers are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. It's all pretty simple sometimes, isn't it? Go where the defenders are not, and he does exactly that. Makes a nice catch to move the chains. Defense, got to find a better way of accounting for the shorter routes that are being run against them. White is into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of a season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. He's got it, and they take the lead at 7-6. to six. So that drive goes eight plays. And it was Rashad White who wrapped the drive up with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Ravens offense and Lamar Jackson set to take over once again. And he's had things all his way in this first half. The number's sensational as he'll look to add to them with another drive here. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive down with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. Could be some contact going on. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Here now, third and a yard. Jackson work in the middle of the field and he's got a man complete and he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion 
And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. To throw is Jackson. That's going deep for Bateman. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now it's Jackson. On target to his man, likely. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs 34-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Aguilar in motion left. To throw again is Jackson. He finds Aguilar over the middle. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now Jackson. And he'll get this underneath to Henry. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Jackson now. Throw right side here, taken in by Bateman. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it's second down. Now it's Jackson. Completes it to Aguilar. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. And Jackson throwing once more. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half, but the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. From the gun, Jackson. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. Now with five seconds left, not really enough time to run another play and then stop it, so on comes the field goal unit. Tucker's kick is good, and they jump back in front here. It's 9-7. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high as he once had six oh, field oh, goals. Oh, Brandon, but six? Let's hope we don't get that again, <laughs> please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. And they will not get a chance to return this one. It's through the back of the end zone for a touchback.
The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And they'll have time for one play. There's two seconds on the clock. That is caught. It's Chris Godwin. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Ravens out in front. As we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando, they're standing by as Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? This has certainly been a fun one to watch so far. We knew this was going to be a battle. But we have not been disappointed. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side could play mistake-free football the rest of the way. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. The Ravens ready to receive it. And they've got the lead as well as we resume play in the second half. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Ravens offense and their quarterback headed out for this next possession. And he had it going in the first half, that's for sure. He's really had his way with his secondary. They've been powerless to stop him. And he'll look to keep it rolling right here. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Hey, Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half, they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it. But I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities. And I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. And that's not a play that you see all that often at the start of a drive, but some teams, they don't mind doing it. And that one, well sold by the offensive linemen. They showed the pass, and then they got out into space, able to get some good blocks downfield and allow the play to be successful. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. They'll bring one of the tight ends in motion left. Here's Jackson. Complete to Likely. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Second down and three. Henry up the middle. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and ten. That ball's caught. Aguilar right side. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple at its second down. But looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackled him for a loss. Here's Jackson to throw. A slant route caught by Bateman. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because usually five on three. 
And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. Tucker's kick is good, and that will push the lead up to 12 7. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. I would say that you've pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you actually have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept, kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though, three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 27. Evans comes in motion right. Mayfield now. This is White on the screen. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. And that's the kind of play this offense needs to maybe kick them into gear a little bit. They've been stuck in neutral much of the game. Perhaps that can give them a little bit of confidence that big plays are out there. They'll send the big tight end in motion right. Mayfield. He's got a man complete. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 34. Running out of the gun with White, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. In motion right, one of the tight ends. And there's a short one taken in by Otten. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. A few moving pieces on that play because that was an RPO, was it not? It was, but one important piece that didn't move incorrectly, the offensive line. Because when you're running this play, as he continued down the line of scrimmage, sometimes the lineman can wander downfield. And if you're more than a yard downfield, it's illegal to throw the football at that point. But they held their ground, held their spot, and turned it into a nice game. Open man, it's Palmer. And down inside the 15 he goes. The Bucks passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. Now back to the ground game with White. And strong running there as he's inside the 10 and down to the 8-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Second and five from the eight. Mayfield looks to throw. Over the middle complete. That's Evans. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot.
Here's Mayfield. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Trey Palmer from three yards out. And the Buccaneers have taken the lead here in this third quarter. So a very strong first drive in the second half, Charles, as they've turned that halftime deficit into a third quarter lead. And they were pretty purposeful there, weren't they? Measured in their approach. But boy, they executed awfully well moving the ball down the field. Todd Bowles leaving his offense on the field. They're going to go for two here. Mayfield going to try to throw for the two. And that's caught at the two. And he'll get into the end zone to push the lead up to a field goal. So they make the decision. They want a three-point lead versus a two-point lead, and they got it. Yeah, at this stage of the game, it seems like the exact right thing to do. Put a little pressure on your defense, but the biggest thing now is you're making the other team chase you. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Throwing is Jackson. It's caught by Aguilar. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. And that play came together really well for them as he found open space, makes the catch, and gets down to the one-yard line. You know he's kicking himself right now. He thought he had a chance to get a touchdown and put that in his ledger. Instead, his team gets a chance to cash in over these next few plays. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Fast, slow, it doesn't matter. If you give a quarterback enough room to escape, he can hit you for a big game. You've got to give him a little more focus moving forward. You can just kind of sense the momentum turning here. It's first and ten. Jackson. A short throw caught by Andrews. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Well, it certainly doesn't matter if it's been through the air like on this play or on the ground. I don't know what's going on with this defense. In a sense, they've been AWOL on this drive so far. Three plays, three first downs given up. They've got to find the answers, and they've got to find them quick. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. In motion right is Aguilar. Jackson throwing middle and it's complete and he's going to get this down near the 20 yard line 11 more on that one and another first down now what we're seeing this is much better from this offense because so far in this game no touchdown to this point and what's usually a direct correlation very few explosive plays that's been their issue not able to make that big shot downfield or break one off but a nice game there for a first down. A quick pass out to Aguilar. So just three yards on the completion there. And that'll bring up second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. And they'll come up second and seven. To throw is Jackson. 
And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air and defensively. They were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Now it's Jackson. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. The Bucks defense stiffens and pushes this to fourth down. Back-to-back -back incompletions of what was once a nice drive. Stalled out here. I'm going to give credit to the secondary partner. Never gave up as they gave up a few yards, and they came through on that play to deny that pass and force the fourth down. Tucker's kick is good, and that will tie the score at 15-all. So no problems at all on that one. And, and you know there's virtually no win. This is a kicker's dream here tonight. It absolutely is, isn't it? So to me, with no win, it should be a passer's dream as well, yeah. right? But in this case, the defense held out. He had to force the field goal. Nothing separating these two teams on the scoreboard as the kick's away here. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Now a pause, and there's an injured Raven in need of some assistance. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And, partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Now Mayfield. And that's going to be incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Throwing Mayfield. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. The visitors' offense and their quarterback ready to go once more. And he's been a nightmare to scheme against throughout this one. This defense has been totally taken apart, and that is borne out in his numbers. He's been terrific all game long. The Baltimore offense at the line, set to get going. Throwing to start the drive. Jackson, he finds Aguilar over the middle. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. They'll bring the tight end in motion right here. Now Jackson. That's into the hands of Flowers over the middle. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. 
You always worry about those smaller receivers running through that gnarly patch of land in the middle of the field. But he did a really nice job there holding on to the football and protected himself as best he could while completing the play. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Jackson, option right. And some solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane, and he keeps it himself there. Worked out well. And how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. Let's face it, most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play. Joe Tryon there to make the tackle. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Line of scrimmage, the 24. This is second and six. In motion left here, one of their tight ends. They go play action with Jackson. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. He's been making himself a weapon as a runner, and the results, they've been welcomed by his offense. My question is about the defense we're watching right now, partner. Even after he got him with a scramble earlier this drive, they still aren't devoting enough attention to him. I would expect that after that carry, they'll do a much better job going forward, spying on him on passing downs. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. Third quarter, all tied up. This is second and ten. They'll motion the tight end across the formation. Running left, it's Henry. And he stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. A field goal would get him the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. They'll bring the tight end in motion right. Jackson now. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. As expected, he's gone to him several times in this game, but that's the first time one has slipped from his grasp. I'll bet he goes back to him, though. He's an excellent player. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. From the left hash, a 31-yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good, and they have regained the lead. So a response there to the touchdown of the opening drive of this third quarter as they're able to reclaim the lead. And I think you'll take that because obviously you'd like to be able to match them touchdown for touchdown, but the first order of business was to get the lead back, and they've done that. Now you want to give a good pep talk to your defense to take it from there. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And he's going to be out of bounds across the 50. Great return. The Buccaneers offense and running back Rashad White set to take over again. And he's had his fair share of troubles in this one, unfortunately. This defensive front has wreaked havoc throughout the contest, and he hasn't been able to create enough space to make something positive happen to this point. That strong return has set them up nicely for this drive, and we all know the next score is going to have a major impact on this game.
They go with White on the counter. And he tries to keep the legs churning, but he's going to be stopped behind the line. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. In motion left goes a tight end. This throw incomplete, nearly picked off. And with his pedigree, he doesn't drop many of those. But third down coming up. In any event, it happened pretty quickly. I'm not sure he made the right decision on that one. I think if he had it to do over again, he would have found a different target downfield. But he made his decision, and that one's incomplete. From the gun, Mayfield. Able to find the open man. That's complete. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. A good pick up there, 26 yards. With the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. They run straight ahead here with White. Brought down at the 20. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. Here's a second and eight. Palmer going to go in motion left. Mayfield to throw it. This one taken in by Otten. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. The tight end in motion right. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. To throw, Mayfield. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Bucs are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. They'll set up to throw. Throw left side, hauled in by Otten. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. From the two now, second and goal. White sidestepping his way into the end zone. It's a touchdown. So the toss play effective, even down here near the goal line. Yeah, and you're hoping the defense commits too many men to stop the run in the middle of the field and that your blockers can gain a little bit of an advantage. And when they do, foot race to the pylon, and this time he had the speed to win that race. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. And that will make this a four-point game. 
So that drive in total eight plays. And it was Rashad White who wrapped the drive up with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 24. He'll start with a give to Henry. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain or do they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Now it's Jackson. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. They get six on the pickup there as the drive continues. If they get a game-changing score on this drive, it's going to be because of plays like that. That run was pure heart. Took it himself. Found a way to reset the downs and advance the ball. Here's Jackson to throw. Being chased out left. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. I think the defense surprised him there with that blitz on first down. But give him credit. Stayed cool under pressure and still found a way through the extra rushers for positive yardage. Well done. Now second and three. Off the option, here's Henry. He gets away from one. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. A yard all they need, but it's third down. That's complete left side to Bateman. And he will have a Ravens first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. Now we're going to get a timeout. Appears we've got an injured Buccaneer. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Here's Jackson. Throw caught by Flowers. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Give the tackle that time to Jordan Whitehead. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Second and five. And a busy night for Henry continues. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. 
That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. They go play action now. Jackson. And he will not be able to hang on to the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. And it's off the left upright. Oh, my goodness. Heartache. It's no good. And that will keep this a four-point game. Well, Brandon, anything beyond 50, you start rolling the dice a bit. And once you get up around 57, 58 yards, the chances of making it go down dramatically. And sure enough, this one winds up no good. The Buccaneers in good field position here to start out first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one. Close quickly and helped force the incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. They defer to White out of the shotgun. Now they nearly sprung him that time as he takes this all the way down to the 37. 84 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, Keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. When you see those RPOs run, you need the first man to attack and be a disruptor. And on that play, he closed down fast and helped knock it away. Line of scrimmage, again, the 37 as they line up second and 10. Mayfield off the play fake. He finds his target, it's Evans. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 25-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. They go play action. Mayfield, he's got Otten. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. And we constantly talk about people being on the same page. In this situation, the two of them saw the play with the same eyes. They understood where the open spaces were going to be, and they found a way to get there to pick up a new set of downs. Play fake, Mayfield. This is caught by Evans. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. 23 yards on the play. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Here's White, and he'll get it down close to the goal line, but not quite in. Give him three on the game there, second and goal. That didn't just feel like good defense there. That felt like pride, didn't it? He's already gotten into the end zone twice, trying to get there for a third time. No one likes to have the hat trick against them. Second and goal from the one. Again, this is White, and this time he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. 
And that right there is a definition of a statement drive. You're in the fourth quarter, trying to get to the finish line, and here they were able to hold the ball for a long time and move it down the field. And how about them finishing it off with the touchdown run? Winning football 101, check that box. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that pushes the lead up to 11. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it was Rashad White who wrapped the drive up with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And the Ravens taking the field. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 23. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And a really good show of force there as he gets through for four tough yards. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game. Or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. Jackson from the shotgun. That is caught for Sean Bateman. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. 23 yards the pick up there. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. Play action. It's Jackson. Twenty. Ten. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Lamar Jackson. Fifty yards. And the Ravens have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Well, we've certainly seen this before, CD. No one can quite electrify a crowd <laughs> like Lamar Jackson and Really don't know what else to say other than that was special right there. I think you pretty much said it all, but I go back to what you said about electrifying a crowd. He's also electrifying us, and we're calling the game. This guy is simply sensational. Jackson here is going to look to throw. Dancing to his left. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries and see what the data tells us because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation, this time unsuccessfully. I just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go. With it moved up from the three to the two, you would think maybe a few more attempts at running. I, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Well, now how about this return? And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. The Buccaneers offense and their running back getting set for this next possession. And as we roll through some of the highlights, we see how crucial he's been to their success in this one. When he's in this type of a groove and his offensive linemen are creating running lanes for him, he can really put on a show, and he's done so here. The 
The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and ten. Marcus Williams from his safety spot making a nice play. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be third down. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Pass taken in by his big tight end, and he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Throw right side, taken in by Godwin. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. The result, only four yards there on the play. And it'll be second down. They'll go up the middle with White. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. 92 yards for him on the ground now and three touchdowns to go along with it. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. They go right back to White here on first down. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. Well, partner, Marvin, our number one stats guy, just handed me a little card that says he has 97 yards on the ground today. You think he's going to get the ball again? I think so. Three away from that century mark, got to have it. Yeah, and I think what they're going to call is one of his favorite runs, whatever he feels comfortable with, and what the offensive line has executed well today to try and get him over 100 yards. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. Kudos for the defense from me on that one because they were prepared the whole way for him to try to escape and hit them for more yardage running it. I like the way they stayed zeroed in on him and kept him contained when he pulled the ball down. I think he was fortunate to get what he did on that run. On third down, a run from White. And a strong run there as he'll maneuver his way down inside the 15. 15 yards as Tampa Bay picks up the first. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. That one good for 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. They keep it on the ground. White again. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Give him two yards. That sets him up first and goal. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around a training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. And yeah, the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. 
I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They've got it second and goal now as they look for that final dagger. They'll run. This is White. And he's in. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Rashad White taking it in from two yards out. And the Bucs will add to their fourth quarter lead. Well, he'd been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. McLaughlin for the extra point. And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it was Rashad White who wrapped the drive up with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The visitors' offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more. And this defense has got to be at its wits' end, trying to come up with ways to keep him contained. He's had so many opportunities to tuck it and go, and he's turned a number of those opportunities into big plays. Here's first and ten. Now Jackson. And eventually taken down here. Great coverage downfield. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there. And it's second down. Brandon, that's just football 101. If you're out of the pocket, you've got to get rid of the football in this situation. You cannot take a sack in a two-minute drill. Well, they'll come up now. This is second and long. Jackson. <laughs> Eluding the pressure right. Things started a little slow for him as a runner, but he has really found a different gear here in this second half. He's been more aggressive challenging the defense when he sees an opportunity, and now... He has a 100-yard game to show for it. This crowd turning up the decibel level. It's third and long. Here's Jackson. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked up by Jordan Whitehead. And the Bucs are going to take possession here at their own 47-yard line. Well, it wasn't always pretty, but the interception there, that means that they should get out of here with a victory. Yeah, this is not a game that they're going to preserve for posterity on defense, but they did finish it off, didn't they? They did make the winning play to close things out. They'll take that one and head to the locker room. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Now they are really in the driver's seat here, enjoying this lead late in the fourth quarter. The defense does have all three timeouts, but at this point, doesn't look like it's going to matter much. The Buccaneers in good field position here to start out first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. The drive starts with a run by White, and he'll be brought down right on the 50, a gain of three. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. Have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. 
He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as he'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Third and four. They stay on the ground with White. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down by 12, 35 seconds to go. It's an extremely tall order in front of them, but they've got the ball with a first down. Jackson to throw. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. And just over 30 seconds remain. Here's second and 10 now. His throw is going to be incomplete. Passing lanes tough to come by with so many defensive backs on the field here late in the game. And it's not just the number of bodies. It's their quickness and their agility that makes it tough to complete a pass. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. Jackson. To Henry, and he'll be stopped after a very short gain, and now you're looking at fourth down. One last shot for Jackson. Connecting with Andrews, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Well, somebody lit a fire under that offense during the break, Charles. Remember, they trailed at intermission. They come out, they have the big second half, and that lifts them to the victory. And Brandon, trailing at halftime, we always talk about teams making adjustments. You know what the best adjustments usually are? It's just executing better. Because the game plan you put in place at the beginning of the week often still holds. You don't have to make wholesale changes. You just have to do it a little bit better, a little cleaner. And they did that in the second half, and that led them to victory. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Bucks are winners here as we say so long from Tampa.